Hi, I'm Jim. I'm with Thrifting and Collecting, and today we're going to make some compost. So the compost we're going to be using in this video is a black tumbler uh, by uh, Compost Wizard. So it's 52 gallon, it's made by Good Ideas, and on top of it there's this lid that you loosen and tighten, and it's on rollers so you can roll it. Besides the composter, you're going to need some gloves, a yard cart, a bucket, and a shovel. To separate some of our green and brown, I use these uh, cat buckets. Uh, they're great, they uh, you know can hold uh, the stuff that you get from uh, just your greens that you go through when you're making your meals. For a good batch, you're supposed to do about two to one uh, from brown and green. So what I do is, uh, you know, when I'm making my uh, fruits, I just cut them up and, you know, if I find any bad ones or moldy ones or if I have leftovers, um, I put those in my green bin. So we got all kinds of stuff in here. Carrots, orange peels, lettuce, um, pretty much anything that's gone bad in our kitchen. Um, as long as it's a vegetable and it doesn't have any uh, salad oil or anything on it, or uh, it hasn't been cooked, uh, it's great. You know, old tomatoes, uh, peppers, cucumbers, uh, all work great. In our brown bucket, we've got eggshells, old potting soil. Uh, you can even use tea leaves, um, all kinds of stuff that you can use. Um, you know, there's lists out there. You just want to check them out and make sure you're using the right stuff for your mulch. When it comes to old kitchen scraps, you want to make sure you uh, rip up some of the larger items, you know, that are going to take a while to decompose and make sure you remove any plastic uh, that might be on there. So during the last batch, we've collected this uh, old potting soil and flower cuttings and other yard waste that we're going to put in there. Just sweep up some dead leaves, it'll be great for your compost. You can also use uh, old straw bedding and extra cut grass from your lawnmower. We're also going to add our mashed up bulbs and potatoes, things that didn't decompose during the last batch. After you've collected all your kitchen scraps and excess potting soil and plant cuttings and yard waste, you just want to try to top it, up with, top it off with uh, as much brown as you can, like dry leaves. Um, you don't have to leave yourself too much room because all this stuff is going to settle once it starts to decompose. It's optional, but you can add a uh, cup of uh, compost starter, it's supposed to help uh, make it easier for the, some of that big stuff to compost, so um, I always use it, it's pretty good. So about once a week, you're gonna need to do, give it a good roll. If your compost starts to get dry, I like to use water from a rain barrel, that way we're not using any more water uh, from the system. Depending on the time of year, you're going to want to give it at about three weeks. Um, maybe four weeks if it's a little bit colder, but uh, the hotter the temperature is, the uh, quicker it should break down. As you can see, it's nice and dark. Got some bugs, some worms, and it stinks too. Try my best to save the worms. Always amazes me that they're able to uh, get in here, but they definitely love being in the compost. Using a small shovel, we're just going to take uh, the spade and just dig out your compost. Well, we've got a wagon full of raw compost, so now we're just going to dig out some of the bigger stuff like the potatoes that didn't decompose. and. You know, you can either uh, throw them back in there if you want to use them again, or, you know, maybe you just toss them out if there's something that are going to take a long time to decompose. I don't recommend uh, uh, apples or onions or potatoes if they're whole, um, because they just tend to take a long time to break down, and sometimes they can even grow and use up some of the nutrients. So we've got our bu bucket of uh, uncomposted uh, potatoes and bulbs and things like that, so we're just going to mash those up and reuse them. So what you want to do next is find a place in your garden that could use uh, the compost. So, um, you know, this is probably an area that will be dry and you know, hasn't seen any fertilizer in a while. And now we're just going to take our mulch, put it in its new home, right in our flower bed. And 
now we've got all of our compost on the bed and that flowers have some new food. Looking good. Thanks for watching my video. If you guys enjoyed it, please click like and subscribe and thanks for watching.